All right, guys, I want to give you a little intro to the next videos. You do not have to take notes. This is just a grand tour of Pro Tools. Imagine it's your first day working at a new factory and you're getting a tour of what's inside. I'll point out the different machines that are in there, but you don't have to worry about learning how to use them in this section. So just take mental notes. And as we continue with the course and I start showing you how to use the machines in our factory, you'll remember them from our little tour. I'm going to go through the screen from left to right, top to bottom, which should be helpful in the future if you want to know what a certain button is, you might be able to scan through the video and find it pretty easily. The drop down menus do get us jumping around the page a little bit, but for the most part, it's left to right, top to bottom. If things go right over your head, that's okay, because today it's just about the tour, and then after this, we get into operating things. Okay, let's get into it. Okay, here we are in the Pro Tools edit window. I'm gonna give you a full tour, left to right, top to bottom. I'm hoping that this will be a resource since it's in order that you can go back to easily and find the area where you're getting stuck. I'm gonna be purposely skipping a lot of stuff. There's so many things and buttons and options that frankly, you'll never even need to use. So I'm gonna go ahead and just highlight the things that I think are important to us and reduce some of the overwhelm. Along the way, I'll also highlight some quick keys. Uh, for example, when we're going through these drop, men drop down menus, uh, you see like create new, that's command N. So just a nice way to ever look up what a quick key might be is just to check its corresponding drop down menu item. So by the way, we are clearly in my template um, instead of a blank session just for now because I already have tracks set up and populated so we can just go ahead and look at all the things on it. Alrighty, so let's start with top left, the Pro Tools actual drop-down menu about Pro Tools. If you're ever like, ooh, what version am I using? I'm using version 2021. All right, I'm gonna hit the uh, escape button to make that go away. Preferences, all right. This is like your personal navigation preferences. Starting from the left, I'm pretty much gonna tell you not even to open this window. We can really rely on the default settings that Pro Tools sets for us. They're probably perfect. Just a few small navigation things that you might wanna be aware of. Also, just because um, there are common quick keys that I tend to accidentally hit and change my, <laughs> change things on myself. So. I'm gonna show you what those are and so how you can know how to fix them if that happens to you. Display, yep, I'm gonna leave all of this as is. Color coding, maybe you'll wanna change, but that's about it. <laughs> Operation, the only thing I might be curious to change is auto backups. This is a wonderful thing to have if Pro Tools ever crashes. So at, as of right now, I have it saving a backup every five minutes. I'm gonna change it to two, but it only keeps the most recent 10. So every time 10 are saved, the ones before that start getting deleted forever. All right, user media settings. Like you're never gonna need to go into your settings folder files. It's just all within the program. This area is record stuff. I think it automatically sets it to latch audio tracks. If it's not, that's my personal preference. Um, I'll show you what the difference is. This is the record um, armed button. I'm just gonna duplicate this just to show you. So latch means if I click another record button, this will stay on. And if I wanna turn it off, I'd have to click it off. But if we go to change it, to cancel previous on all audio tracks or cancel previous on all tracks if you have lots of things record enabled at once, which you might you might have at some point, um, it's gonna watch the difference, right? So if I click a new one, it just cancels the previous armed record button. That's probably the only thing I'd wanna change in this window. So I'm gonna put it back to latch because I like latch. All right. This might be something you want. Uh, automatically create new playlists when loop recording. I personally do not loop record. If, 
If that's something you're curious about, giving a try. What it is, is I'm gonna hit Control and click this until I see this. This is the looping sign. So if I'm in loop record and you wanna sing one line over and over um, and you want it to populate new playlists, We'll come back to this, but just to show you now what that means, um, every time it gets to the end, it will loop and it will be creating new playlists. When I hit stop, they show up. So it made a few new um, different playlists. So this will be all the takes that I just took. Again, this is something that you may want to come back to if you're wondering um, in the future how to get back to loop record. I don't use it. Just a quick why is, I think as a singer, we need a moment to recollect ourselves between takes. And I just think that we'll get super fatigued if we just are looping and just singing it over and over. I really like just hitting stop and then hitting start again. So I don't recommend doing takes over and over. Just personal preference. So give it a try and see if you like it though. Okay, editing. Yeah, all of this is just navigation stuff that is complex and I don't need to change these complex settings so I'm just gonna be leaving literally all of this how many times do you want to hit undo I have it on my the maximum allowed 64 fade stuff okay this is something I did change I think it was fun when we have an audio file we always want to put a fade in and a fade out just so you don't hear a clip or a cut if if you uh, if your audio file starts in the middle of a breath, then it'll just be like a cut sound and you can fade it in. This is controlling what your default setting is. You can always change, uh, change it another time while you're actually within the program, not just in the preferences, but this is me just setting my default preferences for whenever I do a fade. I want it to be shaped like this. I like this shape. It will uh, have it really quiet in the very beginning and then gradually open up to the regular sound. This is just more of a straight sound, so you'll hear more at the beginning of the fade, whereas this one, you hear less at the beginning of the fade. Um, I think it's a little smoother sound. I do my crossfade um, even, equal, equal gain, equal power. Your mixing uh, preferences, again, leave these all as they are and we will just change things as we go as we learn what our preferences are but for the most part leaving everything as default is great metering great don't need to change any of this <laughs> processing i did change one thing i changed my tce plugin <laughs> leaving it as the uh, avid time shift that means if we were to use this function, um, TCE, it's when you have an audio file, I'm just gonna make an audio file. Um, this is called trimming when you, standard trimming, when you want to change the length, you've probably heard of trimming with, you know, editing videos for TikTok. Uh, but this is the time shift version of it. So if you want, you can actually time stretch. So if this was a word that said la and you time stretched it like that, it would now sound like la. It would be elongating the audio file. So to go back to what I just changed was which program I'm assigning to do the actual shifting itself and it's probably set to Avid Pro Tools' built-in time shifting software, but I have the Waves Sound Shifter plugins and I like them better. I just think that they don't glitch as much and they sound really good, so um, that's a personal change for me. If you ever buy the Waves Sound Shifter package, I, I love them, I love Waves plugins. This might be something you wanna change. Other than that, everything else, don't touch it you want polyphonic, you don't want it to be anything else. MIDI, we're not even gonna touch because that only pertains to producing instrumentals. Collaboration, um, I 
have never done a cloud session before, but if you plan to collaborate with other people, basically over the internet, you'll be recording a song、um, and someone on the other side of the country can see the same session as you. These are some settings you can change for how you want that workflow to look like. Synchronization, just leave it. Okay. Pro Tools preferences, to be honest, you will most likely never even need to open this. <laughs> File, create new, create a new session, pretty obvious. Let's do Command N for a quick key, Command O for open. This one, open project. Projects are those cloud sessions. So, a regular session is a regular session. You are just recording yourself. A project, which would be Option Command O, would be to start a new、uh, collaborative session with someone else. Open Recent. These are some of my recent projects I've had.、Um, and to close a session,、uh, that would be like quit, but without actually quitting Pro Tools altogether. It'd be just closing out this one session. So Pro Tools doesn't have to do the full startup routine and loading all your plugins and, and all that. Save, Apple S, save as. This symbol is control. So control command S would save as. Always be saving as you go because you never know when something's going to crash. Save copy in is a really great function.、Um, if you want to not just send your stems to a mixing engineer, but you want to send them your entire Pro Tools session. If they're a Pro Tools user and they want to open your Pro Tools session,、um, save copy in is the way to do it because as you create audio files, right? This audio file is saving on my external hard drive. If I just copy, The session and send it to them, it might, they might open it up and it will be all empty audio files because the audio files themselves are still on your hard drive only and they're not in the folder that you sent to your friend. So making a save copy in will make a new folder that saves literally every setting, every plugin setting,、um, any, anything at all pertaining to your session and your customization of that session. Will be saved, and then you can just zip that file and send it off to someone. Save template as, or save as template. That's, that's something we're going to be going over. So, when I opened this whole session, I didn't sit here before I started this lesson and make all these tracks. You know, I didn't set all of this up. I just opened、um, a new session as a template. So, this is a template that I created, and when I created it, I just opened a new blank session, made everything. And then when I was done, I saved it as a template. And now it's in my system. So when I go create a new session, I can either open a blank session or I can open a session as a template. Bounce mix. This is、uh, how you would actually turn your session, the full thing, with all tracks included, layered on top of, top of each other, as an MP3 or a WAV or AI FF file.、Um, So, you can either come to this menu and click the button, or it's Option Command B. And this is what comes up. This is the name of my session, course one, <laughs> screen recorded audio.、Um, so, I'm gonna rename it First Bounce. Oops. Oh, this is actually what we're gonna do in week eight. So, I'm just giving you a sneak peek. You can change the file types,、um, always go. Out one and two, never go out anything else other than one and two, or it'll sound weird.、Um, interleaved means stereo.、Um, I don't know why they call it interleaved. It's annoying me why it doesn't just say stereo. Mono is one signal, so it'll be a single centered file. Stereo, if you have anything panned left and right,、um, interleaved. Multiple mono means it will、uh, make. Two files for you,、uh, a left and right file,、um, and those files will be mono files each.、Uh, I would never use this function. I would just use mono if I'm only bouncing one single mono file, like stems. That's, I use this when I'm bouncing stems and I'm only bouncing a single file at a time.、Um, we'll explain that later, but yeah, so file format, bit depth. 
MP3 is only 16-bit, so if it was a wave, it would give me more options. 2448 is the standard. I leave this file destination as session folder bounced files. Uh, basically, every time you open a new session, Pro Tools kindly automatically makes you a bounced files folder once you bounce something. So anytime you need to bounce multiple versions, <laughs> um, it will automatically show up in your session folders, bounced files folder. Um, and so that's a really nice thing to just leave offline. Um, yeah, you're always gonna love to leave it offline because then it'll just process it quickly. If it was unchecked, that would be online, which means in order for it to bounce, you have to listen to you have to listen to the entire song as it's bouncing. Um, and I and this just goes wicked fast, super fast. Um, so that's what it looks like. I'm just gonna show you what we just made. <laughs> It created this bounce folder, and here's my first bounce. Oh, that's where you would locate it. Course one, screen audio recording. Boom. All right. We are moving along. This might be a long one. Sorry, you guys. Stay with me. And also, this will be useful in the future. Importing audio is something you want to do, or session data. Um, so... What import session data means is if you've had another session um, and you want to import actual physical tracks from that other session, maybe you are working on a version two of a song and you have it in a completely new session, you can import the data, so actual tracks um, from from a previous session. This is what that screen would look like. And all I would really need to do is select the, well, I'm just gonna import this one and it's gonna go to a new track and then your import settings. Do you want to import the tempo and meter map? Do you want to import any of these other settings? What this section means is a uh, playlist, meaning the actual audio that's on the track. So I have audio on this track. Um, and if I do want to import that audio, I'll go ahead and do that. Sometimes I don't want to import, import that. If I want to import just like the plugin settings that I had in a previous session, um, I don't need the audio. I just want like the actual hardware <laughs> or well, software settings. So I will just say, do not import those playlists if I don't need that audio. We can also import audio that would mean if you want to import like an MP3. I actually do not really use this function, but you can then import it. Um, I just drag things into the session. Like, let's see if I have something here. Like, I just drag it in. Boom. And then it takes a minute to load it in. So it looks gray for a minute. And then eventually it will find the find the actual audio and bring it in. So moving on, don't use any of that. Um, yay, our guy is here. Edit, undo clear. I just cleared, so it, wants, it gives me the option. This is basically Apple Z. Um, if I wanna go back and re-undo, <laughs> cut, copy, paste, we are familiar with those functions. Select all pretty obvious. These are things that you can do in Microsoft Word. Uh, duplicate, hey, that's pretty neat. A lot of these things, you'll probably memorize the quick keys and not really use this menu. So separate clip, that's definitely something you'll just be doing manually. Um, you're not gonna go to an edit drop down menu to do this, right? That makes it so I can now move, move this clip around. You're gonna use Command E wherever you place your cursor, command E, heel separation. It's basically an undo button. Um, so yeah, there's just like extra things that you kinda don't need. Okay, view, mix window views. This is going to be uh, what you see. So real quick, because it pertains to the mix window, I'm gonna sh switch over to the mix window. Mix window views, I have checked off inserts A through E, F through J, that is this little section here. So basically, if I uncheck it, we don't see that anymore. 
So if you ever want to see more, you would just go to view, mix window or edit window and tell it what you want to see. Um, comments is a fun one to add maybe. Uh, it just made a little space right here so I can say hi. <laughs> cool. Narrow mix, wide mix, personal preference. I like to be able to see more at once. So I like the narrow mix. Going back to the edit window, edit window views, same thing. I don't need to see all this stuff really in the edit window. Um, I just always switch to the mix window um, because this is my mixer. <laughs> so uh, this is where I put all the plugins. Um, I do like to see just one set of inserts because I am putting auto-tune. Um, maybe I'm adding like a, a, a fun effect on just one track. So maybe I do want to have quick access to be able to put plugins onto my track there. So I do keep that in my edit window, one in set of inserts, and I like to see the colors. So that's all I want to see. Um, other than that, it will always show you at least the name of the track, the record and solo and mute, and the type of view on the track, like volume or the wave. Let's see what else we can see rulers i have it as minutes and seconds i like to know how you know far how long the song is so i like to see the minutes and seconds um i don't really need to see the time code or samples i just like minutes and seconds um i have bars and beats always this is bar one three five seven eight nine etc um so that's talking about what you see right there um and that so this is the rulers section i like to see the tempo too because i this is how i change the tempo start time i'll show you something about that later um and what else clips are sometimes i mean the only thing i've ever changed in my view of the clips is whether i see the name or not <laughs> um and you definitely probably want to see the clip gain info um so that you can change the clip gain as you go so right now, notice that I can see REC268. That's showing me the name of this. If I don't want to see that and I just want to see nice, clean, simpler audio waves, I can turn that off. Um, but I want it on. You can also add other information to your actual clip itself, um, like the timestamp. You won't see it if it's too small. So I'm making it bigger so you can see that this started at one bar and ended at the first beat of one bar one and ends at the first beat of bar three. la di da We don't really need to see that. I like when it's less to look at. Expanded sends kind of neat. You would have to be in the mix, uh, the mix window to see that. I don't have them on, but so this is send A, right? Right here. If I turn on, Oops, yeah. If I turn on Send A's expanded view, I could see the whole fader for it as opposed to um, here's Send B. I don't see the fader, so in order to see it, I would have to click on it. And, here it is. and this is like the big view. It's like a whole window to itself. That's just more to look at, and I like to keep it super simple. This is the transport. What do you want to see on the transport? I'll show you what the transport is. It's not even open. The transport can be found under window. It's its own window. Transport is basically just another version of this, plus uh, a little, a couple more options, like pre-roll, like before, when you press play, pre-roll would be, it's gonna play uh, two bars or however many bars you wanna assign one bar um, before your uh, insertion point. So if I press play, it's gonna, and I have to have this highlighted. If I press play, it's gonna start two bars before. I don't know, I just would rather just place the cursor where I want it to be. I don't really like using these, but the most important part of the transport is the tempo area, because this is where you're going to tap the tempo. But back to, we're just really talking about the view right now, so um, do I wanna see counters? No. Don't need, don't need it, because it's right here. That's your main counter here. Um, 
I have it set to the bars and beats. You can change it to minutes and seconds. See? Um, yeah. Things like that. Feet and frames. I don't know what feet are, but um, I really like to keep everything in bars and beats. If you noticed, changed the, the way the grid looked. So now these are units of seconds and that's not how I want to edit. Like if you want to copy, if you want to record one chorus and you want to copy it over to your second chorus, having this in bars and beats because it's snapped to the tempo of the music, um, putting that back to bars and beats, then you can easily copy this um, and well, option drag would be to duplicate it, but um, so if I just drag this over to minutes and seconds, it's not gonna sound in time with the song because it's not on grid. Okay, that's the view. Track, new track, shift, command, N. You will memorize that because that's how you are going to make your new tracks. La di da, this is the menu that pops up. I'm just gonna close the transport, oops. I guess I can't, doesn't want me touching two windows at once. So how you make new tracks, we did touch on this uh, yesterday. You can add more. Um, this just moves it up and down. This will be like how it'll appear when you finally hit create if you wanna move, move things around. Um, so that's where you would make your new tracks. Oh, I just made two new tracks. <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and delete them because I don't need them. Tracks, groups, groups are really cool. Um, I realize going through these menus is kind of forcing us to be jumping around the entire thing, but um, I'm gonna probably repeat myself and talk about groups later when I get down to this part of the screen, but this is where the groups are located. Um, and if you wanted to make a new group, it would be Command G, that's the window that pops up. Um, I named my group, like my first one is Aux. So all of my Aux channels, um, if this is engaged, like that, anything I do uh, here, uh, we'll do the same thing to all of those tracks. So that's just a, we'll get into that. There's a lot more to it than just simply that, but um, it will help you to do lots of things all at once, such as I have a BBG's background vocals um, group, oops. And like, if I wanna add it, if I wanna add it like all of these backgrounds all at the same time, and I have the group enabled, whatever I do um, to one, we'll do it to all of them. So you'll find different scenarios where that's uh, useful. Back to track window, duplicate. So if you wanna duplicate a track itself, um, that is option shift D or shift option D. Um, this is what that screen would look like. Um, notice that I have the lead aux screen, um, lead aux track is highlighted. Uh, so while I'm duplicating a track, that's gonna be the one track that gets duplicated, not these, because even though it looks like I've selected them, I've selected uh, like the audio timeline area, not the track itself. So if I want to duplicate everything about this track, um, say I actually, let's do it actually to this one, watch. If I want to actually duplicate this audio too, I'll leave that clicked. But if I wanna duplicate this track and just not the audio, like maybe I have, uh, I have five lead vocals and um, I need a new lead vocal track, I might just duplicate it really quick and then rename it. So notice it just automatically names it dupe. <laughs> um, and it did not copy this audio, but if I went and left it checked, it will duplicate the audio. Um, let's delete those. I'm, <laughs> this is something I do, I, I, I call it cleaning my room when it talks about fading, but uh, for the most part, like anything that's unnecessary, like I have like an OCD habit of just like deleting it <laughs> if I know it doesn't need to be there. <laughs> so uh, next, so let's duplicate, um, let's see, split into mono, that's kind of funny. Uh, I guess if you had a stereo track and you wanted to 
you control um, the left and the right independently. You could do that. Um, you could, here, let's just show you an example. Split into mono. So this, I grabbed this one because it is a stereo track. You can see two sides. Uh, these are mono, you only see one meter. So um, split into mono. Now I have a left and a right and I can independently control both sides. OCD, I'm gonna delete that. <laughs> uh, if I wanna make a track inactive, say one scenario where I wanna make tracks inactive, this is definitely gonna tie into CPU optimization. You just want your computer to be doing less. So if you have tracks you're not using, just make them inactive and that way your computer doesn't have to think about it. And so one example, since I record vocals for clients, often they will send me their guide vocals. So I have their guide vocal tracks, but once I've recorded their song, like maybe I'll go ahead and make their their audio inactive because I no longer need to refer to it. I'm not using it, da da da. Delete track, yeah. If you wanna delete a track, you can. I'm gonna delete um, by using this button. Another way to do it would be to actually click on the track name itself and then hit control, click on it, and there's a delete button there. Basically, everything that's in this menu is also right here, and so I use this. Honestly, I like almost am never even using this menu except for the window, because I wanna see a new window, like the transport window. Still trying to go in order, let me, let me keep it moving, um, not using much of this. However, this is a button I definitely will use. Creating a click track is something you're gonna wanna have um, for every session, and this is, this is the one button you need to do it. Literally, click that, and it makes a whole click track for you. It, and this is the insert um, plugin. So it ha if I click on it, it opens the plugin itself, which is the click track <laughs> plugin. And you can change what your click sounds like. There's all these different instruments. Um, so do that to your liking. That's click track, that's a very important thing. And it is actually part of your homework this week. So remember that. Clip, this has everything to do with um, this part again, we did talk about it in view, some things, that's just what the clip looks like, but this is about the clip functioning. Honestly, literally leave all this alone. Maybe rename? To rename this clip, all you have to do is literally double click on it and the same naming box comes up. Aha. <laughs> okay, event. All right, event is pretty complicated stuff. Um, I'm gonna skip this menu, but this will come in handy if you are producing and you need to do things like um, quantizing your MIDI. That is a whole nother course. We're not doing um, production. But tempo operations, this is gonna have to do with if you actually change the tempo throughout the song, um, you're, gonna, you're gonna move. Like right now I have it at 120. I can actually like assign right here to be a new tempo. That's probably the only thing I'm gonna be using personally is my quantizing and my uh, tempo if for some reason a client has multiple tempos. Very uncommon. Audio Suite is my favorite drop down menu. This is this is a drop down menu definitely will be using. What Audio Suite is, is a set of plugins that um, they don't f work in real time. Like while, we're, while we press play, I, I just want to process this audio in place. Um, it's like a permanent thing to do. So just for example, um, these, are, these are the different uh, types of plugins, right? So if I wanted to add reverb and I wanted to use Valhalla Room, this is that specific plugin. Um, and the difference between Audio Suite and this inserted one is that 
I don't have this menu on the bottom that I have here, which allows me to render a file. So check it out. Um, I would, I can listen to what it would sound like with a preview button. Um, I can, I don't know why I would need a bypass. You don't need a bypass. You can reverse the reverb. That's kind of fun. And it would print. And then when you hit render, it would actually, oops, it's a stereo. So good thing I have two. Um, it just yelled at me because I tried to process a mono file and it's a stereo plugin. So I would hit render and basically whatever settings I decided, it would, it would process, you even see it print, it adds itself to the name of the track now. Um, and it's not going to be using any of my CPU power. Um, it's processed, it's done, it's what's called printed. That reverb is living here and there's really no way to undo it further along down the line. So if you think that you might not permanently want to have something processed, one tip is to just option, click, drag, um, and then command M to mute this audio file and just keep it somewhere safe. <laughs> um, you can just drag it to another track and just leave it there, or you could hide it in what's called a playlist. So I can hide these there. Uh, playlist is basically um, your alternate takes. So uh, whatever is on the main, the main track is what we'll hear, unless you open the playlists and you press the solo button then I would be hearing what's there. I know I said I was going in order, but this this drop down menu is taking me all over the map. Um, <laughs> so uh, let's just keep it moving. Um, that is Audio Suite. It's super exciting. Really makes it you can get really fun with adding flanders and effects um, that don't have to be actually put onto the tracks like like these do, these need to live here so that when I'm pressing play, um, these can actually be working. Next drop down menu is options. <laughs> I always laugh at this destructive record, just sounds so aggressive. Never gonna need that. Loop record, up to you, I don't like it. Quick punch, if your singer is singing along while you're just like listening back and you're like, oh shoot, she's actually singing, like let me just make sure that I'm recording it. That's like a lifesaver for a lot of engineers um, to be able to go and then even drag back. So having punch record um, enabled allows you to save, I think it saves like the previous two bars um, from when you hit the record button itself. So you would need punch record enabled by, you can do it by hitting control and clicking. <laughs> the D is for the destructive record. So if I were to record over and it overlaps. It's just, it's gonna destroy that previous audio file. What it's really doing is it, it's permanently deleting, so I can't even, I just hit um, Command Z just to see if it was there. And it literally destroyed that audio file, like delete, so you can never press Command Z and be like, oh no, I want the previous take that I just recorded over. You can get the previous take you recorded over if you are in regular uh, record mode. The only reason you would maybe want to do destructive record is if you are really concerned about not using too much space. Yeah, so those are the three record modes and then regular record mode, of course. Pre and post roll, kind of already showed you in the transport. This is the one operational function that I want you to be aware of. Um, insertion follows playback. So uh, if I have this insertion point here, right? And I press play. Um, and then I press stop with that selected. It's going to follow like the insertion is going to follow where the play goes. So if I press stop, that's my new starting point. I don't like that. I actually usually have it un unclicked. So this is the difference. When I press stop, it's going to start back to my original insertion point. So if you're like, recording the verse and you're doing a take over and over and you had it in the other mode, you'd literally need to 
click here again for every take. It's so much more convenient when it just automatically goes back to the beginning of the verse. Okay, so edit window scrolling. Uh, this is kind of a cool function. It's up to you how you want it. Um, <laughs> I guess I have it on no scrolling. Um, continuous might be a good idea. Uh, all that means is when you're playing, it will scroll with you, or if you want it to not scroll, it will just play, and then when it leaves a page, you have to chase it. <laughs> page is another kind of cool option. So again, figure out what you like. So a page would be when it gets to the end of the page, it'll turn the page. When it gets to the end of this, it's gonna just knock us over a page. So that's up to you how you want that. Definitely want click clicked. Solo mode is similar to what we talked about with the record latching earlier. So solo is the S button on a track, on any track, every track has them. So I have it on solo, crosses out the previous. <laughs> Cancels previous solo. Um, latch would be if I hit solo on multiple. I personally like, cause solo is only to listen to one track normally. <laughs> So I usually just keep it on X. Um, so when I solo lead two, it'll turn off lead one. If I do have this mode on, and I'd like to listen to two soloed tracks, I'll have to hold the shift key and click the next S. And so now I can listen to both. But then if I click on four, it's gonna cancel all the others. So that's that mode. Now we're gonna move into the setup screen. Hardware, you don't need that. Playback engine, this is, a, this is definitely a big one you're gonna need. Um, so playback engine is your interface. Sometimes and often actually, your Pro Tools will decide what playback engine to use and it's quite annoying. If you happen to have like um, headphones like plugged into your computer, it might open the session like running through your headphone jack <laughs> and then you would need to change it back to your interface. If you don't hear stuff coming out of your monitors, this is probably the first thing you wanna check, like am I even plugged into the right interface? Um, so this is huge hardware buffer size. Uh, when it comes to basically uh, CPU optimization, essentially this is the art of not crashing Pro Tools. <laughs> so you'll learn different things along the way of how to basically make your, make your computer not have to work so freaking hard, right? So hardware buffer size, um, basically it just means how long in the time unit of samples, how long you're allowing your computer to process audio. So if you have it on a lower number, um, you're asking your computer to do it in less time. So it's going to go faster. Um, however, <laughs> if you're asking that much from your computer, 256 is a good one to stay on. Um, if you're asking that much of your computer, like I need you to run all these plugins and go fast, <laughs> it might rebel against you and you might get the uh, beach ball or pinwheel of death and your computer might freeze or it might literally just crash. If that happens, your computer is begging you to give it more time. <laughs> so go up one more. Um, if you end up having to go all the way up to 10,024 samples, that's basically saying computer take a long time. Um, so it might just start responding slower. Uh, when you press play, it might take a second or um, another funny thing that it does sometimes is when you're moving your mouse around, it might look like it's hiccuping on its way. You'll see, uh, it's just like responding kind of slowly, but you wanna do it anyway because you'd rather it move slowly than crash. Ways to not make it have to work so hard are like turning plugins off um, until you really need them and then printing stuff with like audio suite. Like instead of putting your crazy effects on the whole track itself to be playing in real time, you can just process something really quick. Actually printing your special effects such as art, auto-tune, things that are like gonna be actually on the audio track, printing all of that to another track using what's called the commit function or by using a system of busing and printing, which I will go through in the next class. 
um, but pretty much you need to make sure that you're using the right playback engine, which is your interface. And I'm gonna keep this around 256. My computer is pretty new, it's running really great. I've optimized as best I can. If you're really struggling, you have it all the way up to 1024 and it's just still crashing, um, you might check this button, it will ignore errors and it might sound funky, uh, it might cause clicks and pops, but it will allow the computer to, to work. You wouldn't want this on while you're bouncing a, a final mix because then those clicks and pops might be baked into your final recording, which you don't want. Um, I generally keep that off until I actually really need it. Disk allocation, this is just showing you where it's saving all of your files. Peripherals, probably won't need this. Uh, this is like getting complicated when you have like outboard gear plugged in. Um, peripherals being like hardware. I-O stands for input output. Um, I would love you to just not touch this screen. Um, Pro Tools automatically populates things pretty well. If you're troubleshooting and you've made some changes accidentally, uh, I would always just like go back here and click the default. Um, that might set things straight. Uh, when you are making your template, if you wanna get fancy and name your buses, I have done this. Um, I've named my reverb channels my delay channels by coming over here and like clicking on it and typing in something. Uh, not super necessary. Yeah, so again, just please leave all this alone <laughs> for the most part. And then lastly, preferences, which is literally the same menu from over here. So I don't know why we have two, but we do. Next is the window screen. Um, your two main screens, windows are mix and edit. We're in the edit window. It actually says edit right there. Um, and your quick key here is Apple or command equals. That is your button to switch back and forth. So if you just keep hitting it, it'll just go back and forth between those two windows. Um, very important. You'll be using those that quick key a lot. Other than that, transport is the other window you'll be referencing often. Um, and this has to do with figuring out your tempo so one awesome, awesome uh, function that Pro Tools has is called Tap Tempo. And when you drop in an instrumental, you can actually um, press play, play along with it. You would put your mouse right here, click here, and press the T button, uh, to tap it to the beat, and it will start showing you. Oh, I'm really accurate on 103. <laughs> faster, you can see it changes, and if I'm inconsistent, it might move around a little bit, um, and then you can find your tempo that way. I will turn on my click track and uh, listen, and if I hear the click starting to get a little slow, then I'll know, um, oh, I, or a little fast, I'll know I maybe wanna try like 151. You can actually just type it, and then press enter and it will snap to a new grid. Another thing to note when you do have your tempo programmed and the click is the click is playing along to a quarter note. Um, if you want it to go faster, I don't know why, but you would actually select a, a half note. <laughs> if you want the click to go, so that would be like double time. If you wanted to go like half time, you would click the eighth note. I feel like that's backwards. I don't know why that is. For the most part, it will stay on the quarter note. If it's like a really slow tempo um, and you just want it to be clicking double time, um, sometimes I do come up here and set it to that half note. And for the most part, that's all you're really gonna be doing in this screen. And then once you have your tempo programmed, you can just shut that out. One other thing I just wanna show you. Um, next to the tempo, if you have, uh, in the rulers shows tempo, right? You can actually uh, click this drop down. See this red button here? Um, if I drag it up and down, it's changing the actual tempo. One thing that happens a lot is you get an instrumental, and for some reason the instrumental like doesn't start doesn't start to like here. Say that's like the start of your audio file. You're gonna want to come and hover over this so it looks like a little hand, and then you're gonna move it over and 
till you find the right spot. Um, I sometimes accidentally wiggle, then I might need to open up my transport one more time. And you're like, oops, I wiggled and changed the tempo, so now I'm putting it back to what I want it to be. Oh, by the way, you can also change by double clicking on the 4-4. Four, four. Uh, you could change it to 3-4. Color palette is definitely something I use though. I definitely wanna assign a color to my tracks for whatever reason, helps me navigate quickly. Um, you can also change the color of your clips. Pro Tools it just automatically assigns. Um, here is the color, here's the menu of the color that you're changing, right? Um, so clips and tracks would be like this guy. So I can tell it what color I want it to be. Um, but if I wanna change the actual track color, um, I would have to select the track's name and then I can change its color. You know what I mean. Jelly bean. Uh, I never really need to look at this, but if you're just curious what your disk usage is, <laughs> this will show you how much space you have on your hard drive. <laughs> fun, fun fact. Um, system usage is gonna be your actual CPU usage. So looks like I'm using 31% of my computer's memory to run this session. Um, if you are running out of CPU power, you will see all of these in the red. 